Amen. For Children's Church. For Kids Tap. We'll be, we want to we want to be in prayer for Amanda, Chad and Amanda. Amanda's going to be having her baby. If not today, it will be tomorrow. But she's up at uh, the hospital in Jacksonville right now. And uh, Mr. Jimmy and, and uh, Miss Gwen are up there with her. So we'll be having a brand new baby by tomorrow. So pray for, pray for a safe delivery uh, for that. I want to speak for the next few minutes on why is there so much war? You ever wondered why there's so much war? And I mean, more, more war all the time, isn't there? <coughs> Citizens of this planet have never been able to get along. Have, have you noticed that? Why can't we just all live in peace and get along? But we don't seem to be able to do that. From the very first family until now, there have been problems. How many of you know who that is? Who's the very first family? Adam and Eve. And uh, the sibling rivalry got so bad in that family that the first murder was committed. And ever since that time, we just can't seem to get along. What started as a rebellion against God and His authority has escalated over the centuries into worldwide wars that have killed millions. Psalms 2 really is the answer to the cause of that war. And that's where I want to take you this morning. Go to Psalms chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading out of the King James. You can turn whatever version you might have. Psalms chapter 2. Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then He shall speak unto them in His wrath and vex them in His sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and ye perish from the way, when His wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. And all God's people said. Amen. Let's begin with prayers. We think about why is there so much war? Lord, I thank you for the word, and I thank you, Lord, for this particular psalm, Lord. It really gives me comfort knowing that it all turns out good in the end, Lord, and those of us that follow you, it's going to be fine. But those that hate you and oppose you, Lord, is not going to be so good for them. But in the meantime, Lord, our job here upon this earth, between wars and between fights, Lord, is to try to rescue those that might come to you. So help us do that with our time, Lord. Help us to speak... Uh, words of life and words of grace to those around us every day of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Why do the nations make war? Says the nation. Why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? That's a good question, isn't it? Why in the world do nations make war? Now, the popular theory today, if you go to some of the secular historical classes, and particularly in the liberal arts colleges, they will blame most of it on us. It's, it's the Christian nations. It's the Christians that are doing it. It's the people that believe in the Bible. And it's the American, you know, the Americans going around, uh, you know, trying to colonize the world with little Americas everywhere. And you, you will hear that if you read secular history. But warfare has always been an integral part of the human race. Long before America got here, there was war and rumors of wars. And Jesus said... There will be wars until the very end of time and a lot more as the time approached. But it started way, way back with the angelic host of heaven when Lucifer was cast out of heaven with one-third of the angels. You, you've heard about demons, right? Demonic forces and evil things. Well, demons are nothing more than fallen angels. They were one time in heaven with Lucifer. 
and one third of them actually were cast out of heaven with him. Revelation chapter 7, 12 verse 7 says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the, the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the drag, that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. See, some of the angels rebelled when Lucifer rebelled and were cast to the earth. And you wonder where all the warfare comes from. Listen, it's not the Christian's fault. It's not those, that, those of us that believe the Bible's fault. It's not those of us that believe in Christian morality and the uh, Christian way and the Bible. It's not our fault. It started with that angelic fall long ago. Satan brought it to the earth. And, and since that time, he's presided over the deaths of millions upon millions of humans through wars and false religions that he has inspired. And I'm going to go on record today saying that the real cult, or the real fault out there, not only Satan, but false religion. And people, and in, in, we see all these little coexist bumper stickers around here, don't you remember you seeing those? You see the, the, the liberal professors and the, the liberal elite that rule and crush Alachua County. They really believe the opposite of what I'm saying today. They really believe you're at fault. It's, it's our problem. We caused it. But all the wars in some way are connected with false religion or man-made ideologies. A little bumper sticker, coexist with all the different religions. Listen, you can't coexist with them. You know, each religion is in itself uh, believes it's the only way. And, and they're all false religions other than biblical Christianity. The, the trio of the world's worst mass murderers. In fact, if you study all the isms of history, these are some of the worst. Uh, the, you know, the Union of Soviet Republics under Stalin, they killed upwards of 60 million people because of an ideology. The People's Republic of China under Mao, they killed... 50 plus million people because of an ideology. The German Workers' Party of, of the Nazis under Hitler killed 20 million plus in America. You see, it's not Christianity and it's not the Bible that has caused the problems and it's not the, the belief in the, the God of the Bible that's pro caused the problems. It's the, the opposite of that. Those that won't believe in the God of the Bible and do it His way. Just, you could go to, to this website, the Black Book of Communism in Wikipedia, and get these statistics. And, and, I, and some of you that are in college right now, I would urge you to write some papers on the, the deadly effects of socialism, progressive co communism in the world today. 65 million people in China for sure murdered by socialism, communism. 20 million in the Soviet Union, 2 million in Cambodia, 2 million in North Korea, 1.7 million in Africa, 1.5 million in Afghanistan, 1 million in Eastern Europe, 1 million in Vietnam, 150,000 in Latin America, mainly Cuba, 10,000 deaths resulting from the actions of international communist movement in communist parties not in power. 94 million plus lives snuffed out by movement inspired by Satan himself. And all false religions and all false ideologies have as their father, Lucifer or Satan. He started it. And, and oh, let's be inclusive. Let's have the big tent. Let's peacefully coexist. No, we can't. Not with evil. Not with movements that murder people. And, and see, the, the, we used to have to take uh, Americanism versus communism. How many of you remember that? They made us take that in the, in, a long time ago in school. That was a requirement to graduate from high school. Nowadays, that would be like anathema. They don't talk about the communists like they should talk about them. They, they, they pump them up as being, oh, that's a wonderful system. And it's just another way that people... And we need to be inclusive and accept them. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. There are some things worth opposing. And communism is just one of the isms that has been worth opposing. See, God will never peacefully coexist with evil. And so many times our wars have been blamed on, well, they went over there to get oil, and they went over there to do this, and they went over there to do that. When in reality, it boils down to fights between ideologies most of the time. And yes, some people probably did benefit from the war. I'm sure there are people that got rich. I've read where Johnson got rich off just the, the uh, 
uh, scrap iron and stuff from, from the Vietnam War, but that's beside the point. What, what really matters is what were we fighting there? Well, who, who were we opposing? We were opposing the communist butchers that killed 150 million in Vietnam and, or 150,000, whatever it was, the statistic was a moment ago. We were trying our best to stop the tide of these ideologies that murder people. You see, Lucifer... Satan is the main cause of all the world and the earth, not God. Although the Bible does say God is a warrior and God's going to win the war and then He's going to come with a, with a flaming sword in His mouth one day to oppose and, and defeat the armies of the earth. S Lucifer is the main cause. Satan, his bunch, is what have caused the wars upon this earth. And, and don't let anybody tell you, it's the Christians, don't let anybody tell you, oh, it's America, America's bad, and they go around just trying to, to be mean to people on the earth. I don't know of a, another country on earth that will go in and bomb a place, level it, and then go back and rebuild it. You know why Japan is so strong today and why they're one of the strongest industrial nations in the world? Because after the war, we rebuilt it and taught them how to, how to put in mass production better than they had before the war. We did it. Our money did it. In the same way, we rebuild nation after nation when we have to fight against them. And what other country has done that and not owned that nation? People that talk about us, oh, we did it for oil and owning the oil. If we did that to own the oil, why don't we own the oil fields now? Why do we still have to buy it from them? If we did it for oil, why do we have to buy it from them still? You see, Lucifer, the liar, the murderer, is the main cause of all the mayhem upon the earth and all warfare. The devil has been at war against God since he was cast out of heaven. He's mad as hell, folks. And the place he's going to dwell one day. He's mad as hell, the place he's going to dwell. And I'm telling you, he's been mad since then. Revelation 12, 9, here's from the New Living Translation. Listen to this. The great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across heavens, It has come at last! Salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren and sisters has been thrown down to the earth. The one who accuses them before God day and night. Let me hear a shout. Let me hear some cheering. Huh? That's better than a gator touchdown. The fact that the enemy has been defeated. Jesus cut his, took his fangs out and defeated him. He no longer can accuse you before the Father. He's been thrown down. He's been thrown out. And he's, he now, it says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. You soldiers went not even, a, not even thinking about the fact you might die. All these guys standing here went not knowing if they were going to come back. They, didn't work, they weren't worried about dying. They were worried about standing for what they thought was right. They served our nation because our nation called on them. And, and we serve Jesus because He's called us to serve Him. He's called us to be in His great family. And all through history, Christians have been killed. Right now, they're being, their heads are being cut off by ISIS. Right now, today. Christians are losing their lives. And you know what? They're boldly standing there, never denying their faith, but they're going, going to heaven at the point of the sword. It has happened all through history. The Bible says they overcame them with their testimony by the blood of the Lamb. In, in life or death, we're going to win this thing. The battle is ours. <laughs> the battle is the Lord's. He's the victor. And Satan is the loser and the cause of all the problems. Now look at verse 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in the heavens rejoice. <laughs> Those of you that are going to live in heaven rejoice. But look what it says. But, but terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. See, he's the one causing the problems. All the mayhem, all the problems are caused by him. And those that won't follow God, those that won't follow the Bible, those that won't follow Christianity, that want to find another way, it's caused by them. Their crowd is lay all the blame at their feet. I'm tired of them blaming us. It's time that we throw it right back at their feet and say, no, no, that's the fruit of what you believe. That's the fruit of your false religion. That's the fruit of your false ideology, not the fruit of what God says. See, Satan hates God and has always inspired mankind to fight on his side rather than on God's side. He wants people to follow him. And he's, and he's very good at inventing all these other religions and all these other ideologies that people follow. Cain listened to Satan a long time ago and brought murder to the earth. 
You remember what God said to, to Cain? He says, uh, he's at your door. He says, you, you, need to, you need to conquer him. He's at your door. You, you shouldn't be listening to him. And yet, what did Cain do? He listened to him and he murdered his brother. Then, he, then God confronted him and he says, am I my brother's keeper? Is it my day to look after my brother? He says, man, your, blood's bro your, your brother's blood cries out of the ground where you buried him to me. I know where you buried him, you murderer. And you remember that he was cursed from then on and, and he lived the rest of his life as a homeless vagabond upon the earth. Why? Because he followed and listened to Lucifer. He listened to Satan. All the bad things of history have been caused by those that refuse to do it God's way. God's people don't, we don't cause the problems. The people that won't do it God's way cause the problems because they're in league with their father, the devil. Listen to what the Word of God says about Satan when God finally takes him down for the last time and holds him before, in, before the judgment. Isaiah 14, 16. And if you read this, it was talking about the, the king of Babylon at one point, and, and then it goes into a, talking about Satan. Fall from, you know, it's, it's weird how it, this prophet suddenly goes into this text about Satan. And he says, Everyone there will stare at you and ask, Can this be the one who shook the earth and made the kingdoms of the world tremble? When we see him, we're gonna, you know, we always see him as this real strong, bad being, you know, with a pitchfork. And, but people are going to go, It was him? little measly him it says they're going to look at him and say and is this the one who destroyed the world and made it into a wasteland is this the king who demolished the world's greatest cities and has no mercy on his prisoners see when we, when god finally takes him down and puts him in his place and, and he's all chained up and we get to see him we're going to say that's what caused all the problems you see, he looks like a, a real bad guy right now and so many people are afraid of him and they serve him out of fear but when we see him, when God destroys his power and takes it away from him and chains him up, we'll ask these same questions. Not only is Satan the problem and the cause, but wicked rulers are also to blame. And all over the earth there are wicked rulers like this guy from Iran, and won't even say his name, but the wicked rulers take counsel together, verse 2 says. You see, they, they take counsel against Jesus. They don't want Christianity. You know, did you realize in the public school right now you can talk about anything you want to? Everything you want to. You can teach children how to use birth control methods and show alternative lifestyle. Anything you want to, but you mention Jesus, what happens? Oh, you're in trouble. You can lose your job or get kicked out of the, the place, you know. Why? Well, the rulers have taken counsel together. We want to kick God out. We don't want God anymore. We don't want Jesus. They want God the other, the other God, Lucifer, but they do not want the God of the Bible. So they take counsel against God's people, the Jews. They hate Jews. Isn't it weird how you would think that anti-Semiticism would have gone, gone out forever after the Holocaust, and people are even denying that the Holocaust even it happened now. Oh, really? That's being taught in textbooks that, that, was not even, that did not happen. That's why I collect books. I've got actual pictures of what happened. You know, when, when all the media, when, when the books are burned one day by the other side, they're going to burn anything that is, that is conservative, anything that tells the real truth is going to be burnt. And they're rewriting Common Core, a prime example right now. History is being rewritten and retaught in the public schools, totally different than anything you and I know to be true. He says the rulers will take counsel against Jesus and against God's people, the Jews, against Christians. And right now, happening, by ISIS is killing Jews and Christians. If you know, either renounce Christianity, renounce being a Jew, and, and if you, well, of course, if you were a Jew and you couldn't renounce it, they're going to kill you anyway. But a Christian, they'd say, proclaim Allah as God and renounce Christianity and you can live. And our Christians are saying, there ain't no way. Because Allah and God are not the same person. Do not let anybody tell you they are. Deny that every time you hear it because it's not true. Allah is Satan. God is Jehovah, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, he says the rulers will take counsel against anything related to God in the Bible. And, and now, of course, it's outlawed. Everything is legal except this, pretty much, across the land. Iran and the Muslim nations, they say they will destroy Israel and us, the U.S., you know what God says about them? Zechariah 12, 9. It shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. <laughs> Listen, I don't have to... I mean, I want to fight them. I want to stop them. But I know God's going to get them anyway. 
They might take us out. They might take Israel out, this part of Israel that we know today. God's got their number, and they will pay at some point. Verse 3 says, let us break their bonds in pieces. What bonds do you think they're talking about when they want to break off, break off the bonds that God has put upon the earth? Well, what bonds? Well, the boundaries that God placed on the human race, there are certain boundaries that He placed on us. He made them male and female at the beginning. And He told those males and females to get together and marry and procreate, be more fruitful and multiply. Never did He create a man for a man and a woman for a woman. And yet, today... Culture says, let's throw off these boundaries. You know, that archaic view, you know, we have a new idea today. Well, it just goes along with Psalms 2. Psalms 2 said it so long ago, didn't they? They'll, they'll what, throw off these bonds that hold us, you know, that are holding us back. So it's the boundaries that God placed on the human race. It's the control that God has established through human government. When a government is, is the right kind of government established by God, then it has control over its people in a good way. It's not uh, murdering them like the communists do, but in our system of government, government of the people, by the people, and for the people, every, the rights of every individual are, are supposed to be you know, honored and respected and protected. You see, God has put boundaries and controls uh, and also the effect that is caused by Christians living in the world. So you might not think you're having much of an impact. You might think, well, I, I just work at such and such a place and I don't, nobody knows me and I, don't really, I can't really do this and I can't... Listen, the fact that you're a Christian and you take a stand and you're making a difference where you're at, it's, we have a... Jesus called it the salt and light effect. You know, wherever you're at, the saltiness of a Christian being there, wherever you're at, the, the lights you're shining for Christ, where you're in the, at in that dark place is critical. And we have an, an impact on the, the world around us and on our nation. And the bonds, he said, let's, let's throw off, let us, verse 3, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. The whole idea of getting the Bible out of the schools and getting God out of the schools is to break the bands. We want to break free. Well, it started back in my day in high school. All the hippie movement. The age of Aquarius. This is the dawning of the age of... Remember that? It was all bringing in a whole new way of thinking. You know, and love the one you're with. Free love, you know. And, I mean, they're throwing off the bonds. Look, what, look at the result of it now. You got all you got the AIDS epidemic. You got all the the marriages that are fifty percent or more breaking up now, and, and the home as we know it, with father and a mother and children, are, are virtually going off the scene, almost non-existent. Really, we're in the, we're in the the, the uh, decline. Did you know that? Where they have a daddy and a mama and a child in the home. It's mostly single parents these days. Nothing wrong with single parents. Some of you might be single parents raising your children and. And I ask for God to, to give you wisdom and strength to do that. But that's not how it always has been. God, His intention was there'd be a husband and a wife and then they raise their children. And see, they want to cast those, break those bonds away from, from them. 2 Timothy, or Thessalonians, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 7 says it this way. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The only thing holding evil back right now is the Holy Spirit of the living God that lives inside of you. God's Spirit dwells here upon this earth, and He uses people just like you to make a difference in the world. And you're going to be here until God pulls you out. One day He's going to say, Blow the trumpet! <laughs> And the, and the trumpet will blow and all of God's people gone in an instant, a twinkling of an eye. God's, God's children will be gone. And that moment, that presence of all those Christians that have been holding back evil, suppressing evil, having an impact where they work, will all be over, in, in overnight gone. And people will wake up to a whole new world, a world of evil. It says that he will be taken out of the way and then shall the wicked one be revealed. See, the, the Antichrist will come along and he'll be the answer man for a while. And people will, oh, this is the one, let's follow him. And the whole world will gravitate and follow the Antichrist. And the Bible says if, if, it, if, the day, if God didn't shorten the time period, the whole world would believe in him because he's going to be so deceptive and so powerful. 
So what does God think about all these plans, about these folks that are making all these plans and, and going to overturn God and going to charge the gates of heaven and put it... What's it what does he think about it? Is he worried? Do you think he's sitting under going, oh no, what am I going to do? I hope I can find a few more people down there that will help me. You think God's worried about it? No. Nope. <laughs> Bible says he laughs about it. <laughs> Bunch of dumb little idiots. Look at them. He laughs about it. He will totally confuse and defeat all their plans. Listen, Satan has already tried it one time and he's going to try it some more and he's going to try to get a whole lot of people with him. He's going to take a whole lot of people to hell with him. But he won't win. He'll lose. And you need to get off his side. Get on God's side because if you're on his side, you're on the losing side. Satan is going to lose. And Jesus will come and completely rule the earth for a minimum of a thousand years. That's just the beginning. That's not heaven forever. This is just the beginning part of it when He will actually rule upon the earth. You see, Jesus made it all. If you read Colossians, it says that He's the Creator. He created the whole thing and, and He controls it all. He will rule the world with a rod of iron. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, a lot of people don't want to do that today and they're denying Him and they're cursing Him. But that day, <laughs> that day they're going to bow the knee. And say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are Lord. And, you know, I'm glad that we've done that ahead of time. I'm glad we've done that because we love Him and want to. I'm glad that we won't be doing that at the point of a sword before the angels cast those folks into the lake of fire. I'm glad that you and I are some of His children that have bowed our knees to Him. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9 says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father let up be a shout ring out in the house of God huh is it true you believe it amen see this woman had the right idea remember this story don't you a long time ago two different times in the gospels they washed his, poured perfume on him and washed his feet. This woman had the right idea and she was covering his feet with her tears. Not because Jesus said, hey, get over here, woman. Clean my feet. He didn't do that, did he? No. She approached him. Why? Because she loved him. And she recognized who he really was and she bowed the knee to him. And verse 12 says there, Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a, but a little. See, Jesus is all-powerful. People think of Jesus little meek and mild, the little, the little son of God on the cross, and Jesus holding the little children. He's just a little meek guy and kind of quiet. Listen, I'm t we're talking about a soldier God. We're talking about a, a mighty conquering God. We're talking about one that's coming with a flaming sword that will destroy the, everybody that's in opposition to him. He's not, he comes the first time as a, the gentle shepherd meek and mild. He comes the second time. The conquering Savior, super wild. <laughs> Not meek and mild anymore, but wrecking havoc on those that oppose. And it says, kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. It'd be terrible to be in the way and, and just get run over in the end because you wouldn't follow Christ, wouldn't it? Those that, that want to stand there and shake their fist at God and say, oh, we don't believe all that Christian stuff. We don't want anybody telling us what to do. Stand in the way and see what happens. Stand in the way and see what happens. You're going to get run over like a Mack truck at you. Because when He comes, there's not going to be time to pray. You're not going to have time to beg for forgiveness. At that point, it's going to happen so fast. It's going to happen in, that quick. And you'll stand before a, a righteous and holy God and, and receive your just punishment. Because those that won't follow Christ, those that won't bow the knee to Jesus, those that won't give their heart to Christ, they're just as bad as, as the, all those communists that have murdered all them people. They're just as bad as Lucifer. Those that won't follow Christ, they, they're in that same category. And they're going to be punished along with all of those murderers and all of those bad people. Those that won't come to Christ will be punished just the same way. Why? Because they're on that side. See, you're on one side or the other. You're either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. And when I say on God's side, you're either on Jesus' side, the God of the Bible, not Allah, 
Not some other religion, but I'm talking about what the Bible says, okay? This is the God's holy book. This is God's inspired, infallible Word. And He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nobody else is going to get you into heaven. There's no other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved other than Jesus the Christ. And that's who I'm calling you to today. I'm calling you to make a decision for Him. Not Bill Keith or not Countryside Baptist Church, but the, but the Jesus, the Christ, the Son of Heaven, the, the Prince of Heaven, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, the coming ruling King. And I call you to come to Him as your Savior today. Let's bow for prayer. If you've never trusted Him today and, and you want to, be sure that when you leave here one day that you'll go to heaven. I ask you today to, to bow the knee to Jesus. Give Him your heart and your life. In the best way you know how, I can lead you in a sinner's prayer and you can, you can ask Him for the free gift of eternal life. But you need to, in, hum, in humility, come to Him and say, Lord, I am a sinner and I've been wrong. I haven't followed you. I haven't done what you told me to do. And, and today, I trust you as my Savior and my Lord. I believe that you died for me on the cross. And, and today... I want to be on your side, Lord. I want you to come into my life. Make me the person you want me to be. And help me to live the Christian life and represent you on this earth. And Lord, you tell us that those that come to you, you will in no wise cast out. So Lord, today, I pray that you will touch hearts and lives and draw them to yourself. And give them the boldness to come talk to me afterwards, Lord. And tell me that they've done that. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All the soldiers... I'll stand back up just for a minute. I want y'all to line up across the back here. I'm gonna, we're going to play one a, a final song for you, but I want y'all at the back door, and I want you to be at each door to, to receive the folks as they go out. And I would like you to shake their hand and tell them what you what they mean to you for having fought for us. Also, where's where's Mr. Keith Sword at? See in the back. Okay, uh, Angela, if you will get an uh, offering plate and uh, Miss. Uh, Bill, Bill, if you'll get an offering plate. And there are going to be two ladies at the door with offering plates. We have a special need in one of our members. It has, nobody has asked me to do this other than a couple of the trustees, and I've talked about it. We have somebody that has a real special need. There's been a death in their family, and they're going to have to do a long-distance traveling. We need to help them get there and back. So you dig in your pocket today, okay? And whatever God tells you to do, 100% will go to this, this family to help them. So that's what the offering place is. This is a, a, a love offering, okay? Okay, soldiers, watch your film. It's going to be for you, so can you see it? And on the eighth day, God looked down on his plan paradise and said, I need to protect you for this world I've made. And so God made a soldier. God said, I need someone ready to get up before dawn and clean his rifle, shine his boots, clean his rifle again. Then enter a world of foreign tongues who cuss his very existence while he smiles and says, how do you do? So God made a soldier. I need someone with strong shoulders of which to carry the nation, whose shoulders carry the world, but gentle enough to place his child on when and if he comes back alive. Somebody able and willing to call men from different races, places, and walks of life, his brothers, while they enter the valley of the shadow of death and come home to a place where even his own spit on his morals, his beliefs, the very same whom could not spit without him. So God made a soldier. God said, I need somebody to stand beside a man for nine years, call him his brother, and carry the man home on his back, lower the man's body six feet into the ground, dry his tears, Turn to his comrade's family and say, We're proud of your son. I need someone to clear his goggles with spit when he sweats too much, tie up his wounds with a t-shirt when he bleeds too much, and dry his eyes with whiskey when he weeps too much. Someone who will run when he can't run anymore, stand up for his country when his legs are numb, and fight for liberty even when liberty is fighting against him. So God made a soldier. God had to have someone willing to give 110% of himself to a world that requires only 20%. Someone who conducts himself the same whether in uniform, Sunday best, or a John Deere hat. Someone to work all day, all night, 
all year and all his life until his beard becomes too gray. So God made a soldier. God said, I need somebody to do what he has to do so his country can lay down their heads at peace at night, while his enemies sleep only when he does, which needless to say, it's not very often. So God made a soldier. It had to be someone who would put the needs of others above his own. Somebody to swear on a book that his enemies burn. Somebody to sweat, bleed, fight, and kill one day, and drive to church with his family the next. And then, look with eyes broken from seeing too much, as his son says he wants to spend his life doing what his dad does. So God made a soldier. Baby, I'm all yours, I'm here to stay. time.